Welcome to Ken's Corner Podcast, Season 3. Get ready for expert analysis and rising wrestling stars. Now here we go with your host, Ken Judge. Hi everyone, this is a wonderful Victoria Day weekend, Sunday, and I want to thank everyone for coming on here. This is our second episode on Ken's Corner of Sports Chatter. And today, boys... Um, Anyway, let's introduce each other. First, uh, I want to introduce our special guest, Phil Garbert. Thank you so much for coming on here today. Uh, we'll start with up here to my left, uh, Ian from Nova Scotia. I guess I'll How do the it? introducing. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi, Ian. Hi, everybody. Uh, we Nova got Scotia. JT all the way from Thunder Bay. Hey, let's go. And George, not really from Calgary, but he is living in Calgary. So he's wearing an old team jersey of ours, uh, Phil and ours and mine. We grew up with that team called Team Nemesis. And we were people's nemesis. Not always on the baseball field, sorry. Sometimes after the game, we were their nemesis as well. Uh, But that's a different story altogether. Guys, what a week in Leaf time, right? Yes. So we're going to give this to Phil to start with, since he's our special guest here today. Phil, you got some heavy boost to Phil. Last week, we had Paul Henny Hendrick, but no pressure at all, guys. No pressure at all. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about our new coach, Craig Berube. Let's talk about him, Phil. Yeah, it's a, it's a big weekend. It's a big announcement. It's, uh, I think it's it's about time that we have accountability on the team. It's, it's about getting the superstars to realize what their true potential is. And I think that Barube uh, being an next player and a championship coach, I think that he's going to, he's going to bring some account- accountability to, to the team and get the true potential out of these guys that, that we expect as fans. Yeah. You're not, you're not wrong. Does anyone have anything to add in guys? You know, three, listen, 3,000-plus 3, uh, penalty minutes on this day. This might not be the way we play the game now. But back then, there's that word again, accountability. You know that he held people accountable on the ice. and uh, You know he would have done it on his bench and in the dressing room. I'm really excited by this move. I'm I'm looking for Barube to uh, be on the defense and get the puck out of our zone and get it up there for our forwards to get the goals. Right? Absolutely. JT? I think Barubi is going to bring a little bit more uh, accountability to a team. I think uh, I think a lot of the guys really woke up to realize what playoff hockey is all about. Edmondson kind of said it the best. He had never experienced that atmosphere and that intensity and really didn't understand what it was about until this year. And he was, he embraced it and loved it. And he said, it's just a whole different feeling and thought process. Yeah. I don't, I loved Keith. I really did. Um, and he's a player's coach. Like there's different types of coaches out there. Um, Keith was definitely a player's coach. Mm-hmm. These guys are going to need a, somebody in between of a player's coach and a coach coach. And I think Barubi is that perfect fit. I yeah. think he will, he'll get the guys to do what they need to do. But he won't be, he's not going to be a torts where he's just going to lose the room because he's yelling and screaming. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of guys who I'm sorry are not take, going to take kindly to being yelled at. Like that, our team, our team is not built that way for the, in the room. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I think, Bru- I think Ruby was the choice. Go ahead, George. I was just going to say, let's, 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 let's understand this. You know, Keith came in, he was, he, he was in our minor league uh, as a, as a coach and he uh, just kind of got thrown in there. And I believe he did a really great job. Like we didn't yeah. miss this. We didn't miss playoffs for five seasons while he yeah. was there. So, I mean, he did a really great job. I, 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 I really like him. Uh, With yeah. our young players, look at how we developed our young players. I mean, it's, it's really what he, to me, stood out. What stood out about Keith? See, I, I, see, I think with, I think with, with Keith of, as well, he was a great regular season coach. He got, he got his over a hundred points a couple of times. I'm pretty sure. And you know, what I mean, we were very successful under him making the playoffs. But let's be realistic. That's that's all good and dandy, but that's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal here is to be successful in the playoffs. And coming words out of his own mouth was that he did not propel the team to the championship that he was expecting, that the that the organization was expecting, or the fans. His his pre 
seven ga- game seven, his pregame speech in that room when he walked around to hype up his boys was go out, have fun. Mm. That is what his speech was. And I'm all for that. I really, yeah. really am. But there's a different level. And now when you see Marshawn talking on the media and actually being open and telling what everybody already knew, that when you are out there, you are out there with intent to injure. You are out there with intent to end guys' series, to take them out and finish them. When he got taken out, he said it it was a hockey play, and it happens, and he happened to be on the wrong side of it this time. Absolutely. He accepted it, and he was very open and honest about what hockey is this time of year. I think Barubi has a better understanding of that than Keith does. And I think Barubi will, I think, I think we're in good hands. Yes. Agreed. Okay, guys. So accountability is the word I'm hearing around the room here. All mm-hmm. right. So let's talk about how that's going to affect our core four. Are we moving forward with our core four? Are we moving away from core four? All right, Phil, I already know on, on the radio the other day, you want to run them back under Brew Bay one more time. And actually, from last week's uh, conversations, I'm thinking there's a few of you that actually have the same, same feelings. Um, does anyone want to address this first? Yeah, you know, sure. I about it? Oh, sorry, go ahead, buddy. Like I said yesterday to you, Ken, you know what I mean? Like, I think that these guys are proven to be successful. They can play together. We've made the playoffs numerous times with this core group of forwards. I think that giving Brube the chance, first off, to be able to coach um, these four guys, let's see what he can get out of them. But yeah. also give the core four the respect okay you you had this opportunity under keith you you had great seasons mm-hmm. great personal achievements it didn't pan out in the playoffs let's give them the chance to try brew bay system together they know how to play to get with each other so let's see what they can do thousand percent yeah the the yeah. only issue with that thinking is uh uh what do we do with marner so do we let him walk at the end of the season for nothing? There's my only rub. I would love to see what Barube, number 16, can do for number 16. But what happens at the end of the season? Even at the ultimate goal that we could reach, what happens with Mitch at the end? Well, of the there is this, Ian. I'm going to uh, jump in here. Phil and I had this conversation as well. And I think Marner is going to ask for $13 million a season. And it's maybe 13 too. Uh, but there is some wiggle room there if he wants to uh, continue as a leaf, because yeah. here's the thing. He can't go anywhere else unless we trade him and get that eighth year. He can only get seven years anywhere else as a free agent. Right. So he's giving up one year by moving on. Now, does he really want to stay here and play for Toronto? Maybe, maybe Craig Brube makes him think a lot different and he, right. he might be your best defensive forward anyway, next to maybe yeah. Austin Matthews. This man plays on our, our shorthanded and George, one second before you, you go on. Um, Tavares, his contract comes off, uh, off next year. So I think that is a way that we can move around and maybe mm-hmm. get him in at the 12.5. Uh, George, I'm going to let you go. I'm gonna say just let's 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 just keep the team solid, keep the team with with what we got. Let Barube mold them into his t- way of, of of playing, and and let's see let's see what we get. And if we if it doesn't work out this year with with what we got, okay, then we might have to start looking elsewhere. But let's just keep it keep it the way it is right now, and go with what we got under Barube and. Play a good, solid hockey game. Well, and I don't... think we can get away with it. I think this, this year we is almost like a gimme year where we can do that. And it's see our what buffer. Happens. Yeah, we have yes. a buffer year right now. Yes. Well, it's this... yeah. uh, Ian, you brought up someone to Paul Hendrick last week, Easton Cowan. Let's let's not count this man out. This kid is Heck, flying through the monster, OHL, and monster, who knows if monster. he could come on and play even a third line duty for ne- as next year. We can move Minton? on from what someone Minton? like and Minton. We can move on from Yarn Crock. That's and, right. Yeah. His contract. We can move on from some of our bottom uh, David Camp maybe, right. um, which would open up money. Yes, it with would. entry level contract. Yes. 
Uh, oh, guys, we drafted and, 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 and <laughs> made. I love that. You know, we have so few homegrown heroes. Well, you know, we, we get rid of Mitch, and then we got a hole that we're looking to fill with a Mitch Marner type. Yeah. So I don't want to propel Easton Cowan too high, but it's that plus the things we wish Mitch did. Yep. See, and I he, think is, he is. He's, he's, a, he's a tenacious, physical, fast, creative. He's the all-around player. Got a he great shot. Is. I mean, he is. He is. Yeah. So, yeah. He's, he's, he's Mitch Marner with an edge. This is it. Yes. Yeah. Phil? Now with, uh, with Mitch Marner, it's a catch-22, right? The team has to make the trade. We have to make sure that we're getting back what we expect. He has to agree to be traded to the to the team. If if it doesn't happen before the start of the season, um, an extension or a trade, you know what I mean? Then we're going down to the trade deadline. We're still going to get at least two three months of seeing what Mitch Marner can do under Brube's direction and stuff. Now with with Easton Cowan coming in, agreed, he's killing the OHL this year. He's uh, he's definitely proving that he can be a valuable asset, but already assets on the team. Matthew Nice, the way that this guy's playing, you know what I mean? The, his playmaking abilities. If we do sign a Domi, and he's sticking around, and you've already got Nice giving up on Marner, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, uh, he's been a he's been a an assist machine, but it might be the right time to to cut our losses and see what we can get for him. That's right. Uh, George, this question, I'm going to shoot towards you real quick. Uh, You've been a little quiet over there in that team nemesis Jersey, but you're going to have lots of time to talk about that. Um, I want to know from you, uh, obviously Barube is not going to leave this defense the way it is intact. Mm -hmm. So who's your number one defenseman that you wish your top wish list and everyone can chime in. Uh, afterwards, Ian, and we'll go around the board. Who do you yeah. want to see in a Leaf uniform next year? Be it Brandon Montour, uh, mm-hmm. Zadorov, uh, Pesky. Yeah, there's uh, some good choices. Shea, uh, Brady yeah. Shea. I would, I would, I would definitely go with the Zadorov if we could get if we could if we could score a big Zadorov back there with a Edmondson and a Riley. Back there, and that would be a there would be monsters back there, yeah. and we'd be we'd actually be able to help our goalie and be able to 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 you know make sure our goalie is safe back there. Yeah, I mean, and look at him in these playoffs. He even if he's just a playoff performer, I mean, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. JT, <laughs> JT, yours. Uh, I'm a I'm a huge Montour fan. Um, I love what that guy brings to a team. Six times six. Yeah, he's just I don't know. I, I <laughs> six like six times eight. Six times eight. Yeah. <laughs> six times eight. He uh yeah, I don't know. Like when when he, he is the tenacity with the skill. Um he's a physical presence and he let people know. He doesn't let he don't don't let people push anybody around. Uh, him getting into uh Marshawn's face and licking at his face and stuff during scrums, he is that guy. <laughs> Um, I just, I just love the kid, but, um, yeah. from a, from a physicality, uh, Zdorov is just, he's a monster. Yeah. Phil? Monster. Stir. Yeah. <laughs> Phil, yours? I mean, yeah, yeah, we, we talked about Monster yesterday. Obviously, um, we had interest at Zdorov at the trade deadline. Um, there's numerous other guys that are, that are out there. That would be great complimentary. You know what I mean? we Morgan Riley is our number one defenseman offensively. Um, we've got McCabe. McCabe this playoffs. McCabe over the last year has really changed my attitude towards him. Yeah. Um, having Benoit, but I didn't even I'd never even heard of Benoit. You know, yes. what I mean? obviously he he was <laughs> playing he was playing in Anaheim or something or wherever he was. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Like I think that that was a smart signing. That three year deal at a club friendly club friendly class for a guy that it gives us all out there. Mm-hmm. If we can manage to re-sign the free agent Edmondson as well, that's a solid four. They've always got some trick in the bag. Maybe that kid that they signed Weber. out of college. Weber yeah. out of college. Yeah. You know what I mean? So and and with management, you never know. They they've got some traveling has some guy out there that that we've forgotten about. 
yeah. and he, who knows, right? So I, I, I see that you and George are definitely brothers because you didn't just pick one. You guys are going for the two pack. Uh, Evan <laughs> said no. I, I love that idea. We're going to go around the room one more time and we're going to start with Ian. Uh, this is our last hockey topic. Yeah. Um, we're, I was going to talk about the assistant coaches, but there's so many out there. I would love mm -hmm. to see like Boudreaux, Savard. Uh, DJ Smith is definitely a great choice okay. coming back to Toronto, mm -hmm. but we won't get into that right now. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about who the heck is going to be our number one goalie next year. If it was your choice as a fan, guys, pick a goalie. Yeah. Are you going with me, Ken? And let's make it reality. Though. Yeah, let's make yeah. it a little sound a little real. Like, if we're going to get Markstrom or Saros, please tell me how the heck you figure we're going to yeah, do that's that. that's right. See, that's the machinations. I don't know how we do that. But I do think that we can get a 1B with our potential 1A with Wall. Let's see what we have in Cam Talbot. We just need him to win 30 games. And I think Cam has shown that he's got those numbers. He certainly did last year. And... um that's who I'd go for. JT. I'm, uh, I like the, the wool side of things. Absolutely. Um, and you're, I, I think there's a lot of people out there that I think we could trade and bring in, but I think, I think as long as we can keep wool healthy, I think wool should be our number one and we should have a one, a one B tandem and just, pick just go with somebody your um askarov i think is askarov um uh, Yaros. He, yeah he's probably gonna upseed um uh sorrow's spot but yeah. there is a stollers yeah. uh anti yeah, stollers at least um laurent brosette uh, is out there this year there is a couple of guys i uh, don't look now but i think jack campbell might be back on the market oh, boys right. <laughs> phil what do you think <laughs> Uh, I think I've had enough soup for my, yeah, uh, for my life. <laughs> especially with the PWHL. Thank Ooh, God. Wow. Damn it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's we, a different story. <laughs> I, I think we can move on from the soup. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know I mean, if you're, if you're going to trade Marner, obviously being able to trade Marner for a, a uh, number one goalie would be ideal. I mean, realistically, is that going to happen? It, who knows at this point? It would be nice to get Saros out of Nashville for Marner. Something like that would be fantastic. Truth of the matter is, is probably going to be Wall, and it's probably going to be the kid the Miners. Um, he'll to be. He'll to be. He'll to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he's he's an absolute beast. The guy's six foot five, six foot six. Seven, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think absolute he's six, seven. monster. <laughs> absolute monster in there, right? So if we can develop him. Maybe maybe bay has got some wizard out there as a goalie coach that can come in and uh, and get the most potential out of out of Wall and and Hildeby. Yeah, George, do you agree with that assessment? I'm gonna agree with Phil with Hildeby and, and and Wall because you know teams aren't willing to trade good goalies to us, especially to us, and we we never have any luck with any good goalies. <laughs> So let's just stick with with the hill to be and the and the wall, and hopefully wall stays stays uh, healthy, and we can get a good season out of them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, here's here's one. Okay. Here's a quick one. Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. What about uh, Carter George coming out of our U uh, eighteen junior and the OHL? He's the NHL draft. He's going to be going this year. Um, there's a goalie we could pick up, and I'd be a fan because I I know the kid. <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> what a championship! Yeah. What a championship he had! That that monster gold that gold medal save on the oh. goal line with his paddle. Oh my good, just magic! Yeah, yeah he's, um, my daughter's boyfriend's best friend, which is kind of oh, funny. Cool. All right, on. Well, that I do awesome. want to switch my th my prediction from last week on a different note, boys. I think I'm going to go with George and Dallas. Dallas over the Rangers in six. Sorry, JT. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, is anyone else changing? Phil, what's your prediction? You, we haven't got one from you. Uh, I think it's going to be the Rangers. And um, I'm going to go with Edmonton. Yeah. Oh, okay, guys. We're yeah. gonna switch oh, real quick. No, no, no. <laughs> we're we're at, we're at the back end of our, of our time here. We got about seven minutes, so 
we're just going to talk Blue Jays for two seconds, and we're just going to make it specific. Alec Manoa, is he back on his game? What's your opinion? And are the Jays sellers at the deadline? Just answer those two questions. Is Manoa going to be our ace again, and are we sellers or buyers? Ian? He can't be any worse than he was last year. Uh, we definitely need to to retool buyers or sellers. I don't – that, boys, I, has – I, that's to be determined for me. JT? Um, I have a strong belief that Alex Manoa, and this is kind of background stuff, his dad got back into his life. Um, oh. That's what dragged him down. Um, oh, okay. There's there's a lot of backstory that happened there. People didn't even realize it. But uh, so his dad is a real, is just a bit of a douche. So his dad kind of came back into his life. He he made a name for himself when he came up and as, a, as a rookie there. He was firing on all cylinders during that off season. His dad came running to him. Oh, son, son, remember me. I'm oh your daddy. Oh Dragged him right into the mud, screwed him for a year. Wow. I think that if Alex Manoa can keep that influence out and stick with his new wife and just a, his new life, um, yeah. I think if he can do that. I think he becomes what he was. I think that would be potentially the TSN turning point for this whole mm. team. Fantastic. And another 15 to 20 games of this team, if they continue – if they start getting to where they should be, because you look at them, they're always there. They're just not there. So we're on buyers. The I, I think we are buyers until about the 15 game mark. And if we don't see anything in 15 to 20 games, we become sellers. I think that's what happens. Awesome. Phil, your opinion, please. <laughs> uh, Manoa has had back to back seven um, inning outings, quality outings. He had one hit today, no runs, 10Ks or something like that. Yeah. I mean, he might have hit a couple of guys as well, <laughs> but um, that's what we expect out of Manoa. As far as him becoming our ace again, I listen, like, I don't need him to be our ace. I just need him to be consistent. I need him to win us games every five days. Go out there, do your job, give us a quality start, give us a chance to, to do something. Now, if we are going to be buyers, buy some freaking bats. Uh -huh. Buy some people that can hit the ball because it's been proven this year over and over and over again. We are not hitting the baseball. Yeah. George, I'm going to let you answer that real quick, but uh, be quick on it because I do want oh, you yeah. to talk about your, your jersey real quick. Or we're going to close with you. So is Alec Manoa our new ace and are we buyers or sellers? As long as, long as those batters can stay out of the way and not get hit, he's our <laughs> ace. But uh, I hope the hell we are buyers and we're buying some bats. Let's get some good names in there and let's get some good bats. Uh, awesome. That's all Thank I you. got to say. Awesome. Well, next week, guys, when we come on, and Phil, you're welcome to come back. Next week, we're going to talk about our minor league experiences growing up. I wanted to get into that today, but we're going to spend the whole episode doing that. But cool. for today, we're going to let George talk to us about this Team Nemesis jersey that he is wearing right now. George, please. No, this Team Nemesis jersey was a jersey that uh, got made up for a team that uh, went to uh, – I think we went to the finals – and we were a pretty good team. We uh we we were we were nasty on the field, we were nasty off the field, and we were a really, really good team. I, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> yes. And this is slow pitch that he's talking about. All right, uh, on. Are, are you are you uh referring to your Ajax days or the Calgary ones? Or both Well, I I, I, I liked I really liked the Ajax days the and Ajax. I had and I was fortunate enough to bring out the name into Calgary, and then we also shine Sean out here in, in Calgary with this name. Yeah, and and boys, do not read it backwards because we will not like you anymore. <laughs> Someone pointed that out to us. Read it backwards for me, please, JT. Uh, size them what? <laughs> Sissy man. <laughs> Sissy man. <Nice. laughs> Which we were not. That why you think we were nasty off the field? Uh, <laughs> Phil and I actually <laughs> both played for this team. So, right guys, we got like two minutes here. Does anyone, Phil, would you like to add anything as our special guest, uh, or maybe that puppy dog might want to say a few words? <laughs> Phil, thank you for coming on today. Um, do you want to close us off? I appreciate it. I enjoy this atmosphere. 
it's something that I'm definitely interested in. I'm glad that you guys had me, and I'll definitely be back. Right on. Ian, for Ian, yeah. George, and JT, any final words, guys? Go, go, go. Games for Barube without <laughs> being drafted. Think about that for motivation. <laughs> yeah. Last go, words, go, George. Leeds, go, Leeds, go, and let's get some big D back there and then help, help a goalie out. Yeah, right. JT, yeah. JT yours? Uh, same thing. Let's see what we can do in the offseason. Let's see what we do at that draft down in Vegas. I'm going to be there for that, by the way. I'm going down to oh, cool. uh, there. And, uh, yeah, I'll keep you all posted. Maybe I'll take some videos we can uh, yeah. show you. Yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. Okay, guys, thank you again. My name is Ken, and I'm here on Ken's Corner Podcast on our second episode of Sports Chatter with our special <laughs> guests and maybe a full-time guest on the radio and off. Phil Garbett, thank you so much. From Thunder Bay, JT. From Nova <laughs> Scotia, but really from Toronto, Ian <laughs> or Fatima. <laughs> Just kidding. And from Toronto, but in Calgary, George Garbett. Thank you so much, great. guys, for joining us here today. We'll Thanks, see you Dan. all again next week. And uh, again, we'll be speaking about our minor league uh, careers around the room. Uh, Phil, please come back because I know you have about 40 years of baseball to, to talk about. So, uh, guys, have a great day. Have a great week, boys. Happy, going, happy boys? Uh, Victoria Day. Yeah, happy Victoria Happy, happy, Victoria happy Day. long weekend. <laughs>